I'm now going to go through some of the code in this example R primer, example R code, and show you some of the things that R can do. The first section here is labeled vectors. An R object is just some information that R has given a name to. An object is a way of storing information. So for example, if I want to store the number 1 and give that a name, maybe I want to call it object 1. So if I run this line of code by putting my cursor in it and pressing command enter because I'm on a Mac, you can see that that line of code has gone over here to the console. What this says is that the word object one, the name object one, now to R, consists of the number one. And when I type in the name of the object, the value of that object is spit out. Object one is equal to one. This less than sign followed by a hyphen tells you that you're giving something a name. You can ignore this first part, um, the bracket one. That just is uh, numbering the lines that come out. So if there was a lot of information stored in object one, and when I sent it to the console, it had to be printed out in multiple lines, those lines would be numbered one, two, three, four. So in the console, you can ignore um, the bracket one right there. Similarly, maybe I want to store the word one. So if I highlight this next line of code, and send that to the console. You can see again it ran. And if I type in the name of the object, object 2, you can see object 2 is equal to the word 1. I can also create an object that consists not only of one number or word, but of a sequence of numbers or words. And in R, we call that a vector. The way I create a vector, one way to create a vector, is with this notation C. C is for concatenate. And if I write C parentheses and then a whole bunch of numbers within those parentheses with commas between them, R will concatenate those numbers together. R will concatenate those numbers together into a vector. So what this line of code that I've highlighted does is it concatenates the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, and gives a name to that vector. Specifically, it names that vector object 3. So here I've run that particular line, and if I go type in object 3, you can see that R knows that object 3 refers to the collection of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12. It can be very helpful to store numbers as vectors, store um, information all together in a vector, because if you think about what data consists of, data consists of sets of numbers, typically. There's a more concise way to create the same vector that I've now called object 3. And if I want a sequence of consecutive numbers, consecutive integers, I can write a colon. So 1 colon 5 refers to the numbers from 1 to 5. And in fact, if I go into the console and just type 1 colon 5 and press return, you can see that I then get the vector consisting of the numbers from 1 through 5. And I haven't here I haven't given a name to that vector, but I have created the vector of the numbers from 1 to 5. And similarly, if I press 10 colon 12, there are the numbers from 10 to 12. So if we look back at the R code, the content of line 21 here, I've concatenated the numbers from 1 to 5, with the numbers from 10 to 12, and I've given that entire sequence of numbers the name object 3. Note that's the same name I gave to the object in line 20, but note also it's exactly the same sequence of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12. So here if I type in object 3, there we go. It's the same sequence of numbers. I've given a name to a vector. So as I've said, once you give a name to an object, you'll know that it worked only because this arrow sign will come out in the console telling you it's ready for more information. But if I want to then find out what I stored under the name object 1 or object 2 or object 3, I can just type in the names of those objects and they print out. Another thing I can do besides printing out the object is find out how big the object is. And if it's a vector, I can specifically find out how many elements are in it, how many numbers, for example, are stored in it. So one way to do that is with the function length. And you see that here on line 34. Length is a function in R, which means it has an input and an output. The input can be any set of objects, depending on what the function is. So length, for example, can take as an input a vector, and then the output depends on what the function does. So this particular function length um, will take as an input a vector and spit out, print out, the number of elements that are in that vector. Functions will always be um, highlighted in blue unless you change that default. The, the default is the function will be highlighted in blue, and the way it works is we have the name of the function, which is length, and then some parentheses, and the inputs are inside of the parentheses. So if I run 
this vector by pressing command enter, you can see the number eight prints out here. And that tells me that the output of the function length is eight. The number of elements in object three is eight. And we can see that that's true. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's very helpful to use this length function, particularly when you have a reason to suspect that the object you're interested in is very large. Uh, for example, maybe this vector is part of a data set. And if I just type in the name of the vector, all the values in that data set are going to print out onto the screen. I probably don't want to do that. That's probably not particularly useful, but I can find out how many values there are in a particular vector before printing it out to the screen. Um, and that might help me decide whether to print it out to the screen. Importantly, um, this length function, I can type it in the console as well, requires parentheses, as you see here, okay, soft parentheses. R has different purposes for soft parentheses as opposed to hard brackets, which we're about to talk about, and curly brackets. All those things have different purposes in R. Also, as you can see, in the version of R I'm using, on this Mac, every time I type in an open parenthesis, an open hard bracket, or an open curly bracket, it automatically also pops up the, um, the close parenthesis bracket or curly bracket. So that's just something to know.